Hey guys, what's up? John here from flyatmycalpha.com and today we're going to be going over the electrical system on your airplane. So we're going to go ahead and cover everything that's on this diagram here and we're going to build it from the ground up. So totally simplified, guaranteed by the end of this video, you're going to have a great understanding of how the electrical system works on your airplane and what is actually going on when you start flipping switches on. So for starters, we've got a totally blank slate here. Let's go ahead and start building the electrical system from the ground up. First, we're gonna, of course, have some sort of switch to turn on our battery. So we have our battery master switch. Then obviously we need a battery involved in this system. So let's go ahead and add that. So now we can see that anywhere we have these little ground symbols and the, the uh, legend for all these symbols, in case you're wondering where it is and what all these symbols mean, this legend here is just below this video in the electrical lesson on our online course. If you're watching this video on YouTube and not on our online course, make sure you go over to flyatmikealpha.com, sign up for the Private Pilot Ground School, go to the electrical uh, lesson session, and uh, check out this video. There's a lot more detail in that electrical lesson there to help you understand. So we've got our ground here. So the battery DC power is always going to go to ground, and then we're going to have a positive coming out here. So we have that positive coming out and going to this battery contactor, a relay. Basically, a relay or a battery contactor, any sort of contactor is just a relay. Purpose of the relay is so that you can control a large load, a large flow of electricity with a small switch. So you have a nice tiny switch like your master switch, small valve, controls a larger current. So a little bit of electricity, then controls a lot of electricity with this relay. And if you're curious about relays, we'll talk about them a little bit more in the lesson down below here. So what's ultimately happening when you turn on the battery side of your master switch is you are taking positive power that's coming into the contactor and then going back out up here and closing that circuit so that you have positive flow all the way through here, back out through the switch and to ground. So when you turn the switch on, you're grounding this wire and it then connects itself back through the airframe through the ground, back to this side of the battery. So you now have electrical current flowing through this relay. Well, what that does is that generates a magnetic field that then closes the circuit and takes this large heavy wire here and then allows it to flow out. So once you turn the battery master switch on, let's see where the rest of that power is actually going to. And before we take a look at where that power is actually going off to, we can also take a look at what happens if you want to charge up your battery. So you have a ground service receptacle plug here and you would plug in your 12 volt or 24 volt or 14 or 28 volt charger into the side of the airplane and it would flow through. We have a diode here, so one way flow through a fuse back into your battery contactor and back into the battery, pumping that electricity back in, refilling that battery if you're charging from the ground. The next stop after we turn our battery master switch on for our electricity is going to be some sort of meter because we need to know how much power we are either gaining or losing. So we have our amp meter. So that electricity comes out and passes through the amp meter to tell us the total amperage flowing from the battery, from the electrical system, to the rest of our components. What are the rest of those components? Well, those are going to be our buses. We're going to supply power to our primary bus and to our avionics bus. And those, a bus is just a fancy way of saying where a bunch of wires meet in the middle so we can take just two wires and then split them off into a bunch of tinier wires. And then that supplies a whole lot of other things on our airplane, basically all of our other electrical items. And we'll come back to that. We're going to get rid of that for now because it's a little confusing. We don't need to worry about that. Those are things we'll come back to. So let's get rid of our buses there. Let's talk about next what we want to do if we want to start up the airplane. So if we're going to start the airplane, we're going to need electricity to do so. We're going to have to spin our starter motor and we're going to control that with a key. So our ignition switch has a ground going to it and it also has this other wire coming off here to a starter contactor. Now notice that once you turn the battery master switch on, you close this circuit and power begins flowing. You have positive power flowing through here to this starter contactor, which then comes out of this end, this pole of the starter contactor, back down to your ignition switch. And when you turn the key, you ground that out and that closes the circuit in there, allows electricity to flow through there, which creates a magnetic field, which will then close the relay and supply 
a big, large amount of power coming through here, lots of heavy flow out through this pole to the starter, and then that electricity flows through ground, back through the airframe, back to the battery, and you close the circuit, you spin the starter, it gets your engine running. Well, congratulations, now your engine's running. How do you keep it running? Well, you need magnetos to do so. So, on this ignition switch, we obviously have left, right, and both, and that is going to allow you to supply spark to your engine so you have your left and right magneto. And of course, those are grounded out after they pass through the mags. You could disable the magnetos by just grounding out the electricity right to the electrical switch, and then the electricity will not pass through the mags, won't pass through the spark plugs, and that's how you turn off your engine. Besides just turning the mixture off and cutting the fuel off, you also prevent spark going to it when you turn the key off by grounding out the ignition switch. So if one of these wires were to ever break, say this ground wire here, or one of these ground wires there were to break, then you actually wouldn't be able to cut off spark to the engine. You'd probably still shut it down by the fuel selector valve or by the mixture, of course, but the mags would always be hot, and it's kind of dangerous because if you turn the propeller, it could spark, and the engine could start, even though the key is set to off. We'll talk about that more in our Magneto's video, and I'll include the link in the description below on this video. So great, now we've got our engine running. Now we know that with the engine running, we can start making power using our alternator. So we've got our alternator here, with the alternator spinning now, we're going to take power from the battery, actually. So power is going to come out from the battery, and it's going to go to your sense. So when you turn your alternator switch on, you're connecting positive flow from the battery through the alternator field circuit breaker. And then it goes up into the positive sense, comes out, and the alternator takes a little bit of power to make power. It uses that electricity from the battery to generate an electric field and then produce power and send it back out, and it will recharge, putting power back out, coming through the alternator circuit breaker, and goes back into your buses. So let's take a look at those buses again. So now we have another connection point to our primary bus. And since we've connected positive power, flowing power from the alternator back through into the primary bus, it can then also make its way back to the battery and recharge our battery for us. Now, before we look at all our appliances, let's look at one more item here, our Hobbs meter, the uh, crucial piece of equipment that makes all pilots and flight training go broke. We can see that the Hobbs meter gets electricity from the battery relay. It comes through a fuse, that'd be a handy fuse to have blow, and it goes to our clock. And as well as going to our clock, it also comes out here to an oil pressure switch. So once you have positive oil pressure, once the engine's running, that switch closes, Electricity is allowed to flow, flows through the Hobbs meter, through the ground, back to the battery, and the Hobbs meter runs. If that little ground wire there broke, that would be a great day. You'd save a lot of money on your flight lesson. Or if this pressure switch stayed open, again, you'd save a lot of money on your flight lesson. So it's all about the flow of electricity. And remember, electricity, when you have heavy flow, that's heavy amperage. Amperage is like flow. Voltage is like pressure. So when you have big, heavy cables, those are handling a lot of amperage, a lot of flow. And when you have higher voltage, that's just like higher pressure. And of course, if we over-voltage the system, say if we had a 14-volt system and we hooked up a 28-volt battery charger, we'd probably blow out a lot of wires because that's too much pressure for that system. We'd blow out a lot of electronics, a lot of clocks, a lot of electronic components because they're all designed to run on 14 volts, not 28 volts. So now we can see that we've got power via our battery master and via the alternator with the engine running, coming to our primary bus and our avionics bus. And we're measuring this total amount of power here with the amp meter. We can then see what we're powering off the primary bus, and you can see it's pretty much everything on the airplane. You have your fuel quantity indicators, your rotating beacons, your lights, strobes, the ignition system, wing flap system, all sorts of things. Everything that is electronic is going to come through one of these two buses. So that's pretty much it for the electrical system. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you check out our electrical lesson on our online ground school at flyatmikealpha.com. Check out our Patreon page. We greatly appreciate y'all's support. And if you can't fly every day, then flyatmikealpha.com. We will see y'all next time.